Hi, I'm John Pavlock, and welcome back to another edition of Ion Harness Racing, now with you each week on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Racing, 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 plenty of rich races all throughout North America this past weekend, but none more important than Muscle Hill's victory in the $1 million Canadian Trotting Classic. In what has become vintage Muscle Hill, an effortless 153-1 victory with Brian Sears aboard, which pushed Muscle Hill's win streak to 17 races. The $55,000 yearling purchase has now won nearly $2.7 million, a good chunk of that this past Saturday night at Mohawk. Sears. Sears peeks back and he's got a six pack on the others. It's all Muscle Hill. Way back in second, Explosive Matter. Judge Joe third outside. Southern Rock atop his fourth. Trotting greatness as Muscle Hill crosses the line. His 17th straight. He's won the Canadian Trotting Classic and he won with authority. The $441,000 Peaceful Way final went to post this past Sunday at Mohawk Racetrack where Costa Rica and driver Ron Pierce stalked the favorite, Poof She's Gone, until the stretch, when they converted a classic two-hole trip into a victory, the 8th and 11 freshman starts for this daughter of Muscles Yankee. Can tab it all closing now, and way out wide is Tietrick here with perfect chance. Four of them across the racetrack now. Off the pocket trip, here's Pierce in Costa Rica. 1.55 the mile time. Also on Sunday at Harris Chester, two-year-old Pacers were in action. First in the $500,000 Three Diamonds final, Fancy Philly came clear at the end of what was a world record mile by a freshman pacing Philly on a 5 8 mile track with Brian Sears doing the steering. But Fancy Philly's holding her at bay. Fancy Philly wins the 20th Three Diamonds by a length and three quarters in 151 and 1, world record fashion for Fancy Philly. The world record assault continued in the $600,000 Governor's Cup final in which one more laugh set a new standard for gelded freshman pacing Colts with a 149-2 victory in reign to Tim Tietrick and at the expense of rock and roll heaven. It's one more lap, taking the lead by three parts of a length. Malicious is defeated. Rock and roll heaven, the open stretch. One more lap, here's the line. One more lap wins. $609,000 and the second leg of the pacing triple crown are at stake this Thursday at Delaware, Ohio in the 64th Little Brown Jug. We've established a Jug mini site, a web page devoted exclusively to Jug coverage. Visit ustrotting.com and click on the link on the home page that says visit our Jug mini site. We'll have video coverage, uh, coverage on our web all week long exclusively here on ustrotting.com and where you're seeing this video. In the news this week, the Ohio Supreme Court has said that Ohio voters must have a say as to whether there will be video lottery terminals at the state's racetracks. Governor Ted Strickland had ordered their installation as part of the 2010-2011 budget and under Ohio law that he thought was good enough. The court says no. The voters will have to say yes or no to video lottery terminals at the state's racetrack. Driver John Campbell was honored this past weekend at Mohawk Racetrack, uh, not far from his home of Ailsa Craig, Ontario. Campbell, 53, will be inducted into the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame this coming November. He's already a member of the U.S. Hall of Fame. He was elected to that high honor in 1990. While you're at the jug, make sure you stop at the tent located very near the log cabin. That's where the USTA is headquartered. We have something special for charity this week. Saddle pads from a whole bunch of past jug winners autographed by the winning drivers, which will be sold for $100 each. You see here a complete list. That $100 per saddle pad will go to sponsor USTA youth activities. Harness racing and standard bred horses come to life each month in the colorful pages of Hoofbeats, the sport's most widely read magazine. We call it Reporting with Horsepower. Don't miss a single issue. Subscribe online today. Two more Super Nights, including the original at Balmoral Park, were raced this past Saturday evening. Eight races for $1.5 million in purses went to post at Balmoral Park, where nearly 10,000 fans turned out to see the best Illinois breds. One of the most exciting races was the $125,000 Tony Morello final for Pacers, age three and up, which was won in thrilling fashion by Mucho Sleazy and driver Andy Miller in 149 and three. 
there. Mucho Sleazy is coming at him out with a big late bid. Martha Maxine for Marcus Miller. Here comes Andy Miller with Mucho Sleazy. Mucho Sleazy. At Hazel Park Raceway, Michigan's Night of Champions was the closing night feature. Eight divisions of Michigan Sire Stakes finals were raced, and in the $66,000 pace for three-year-old Colts, how you doing, pal? And driver Daryl Wright did just fine, coming from off the pace to win. How you doing, pal? Inside Blackbird singing, outside Boogity Dock Boogity, three to a drive, in between how you doing, pal, or Blackbird singing, I don't know. Yet another Super Night will be featured this coming Saturday. It's New York's Night of Champions. $1.4 million in purses in eight divisions to be raced at Vernon Downs. In our Look Back segment this week, we'll turn to the Canadian Trotting Classic record book in which the stakes record was set way back in 2006. Majestic Son and Trevor Ritchie absolutely dominated the Classic that year, a year in which the son of Angus Hall went on to win the Breeders' Crown, in which he upset Glidemaster, and was also named Canada's Horse of the Year. In the Classic, which he won in 152-2, and two, in which Glidemaster was also the runner-up, he sped from the nine hole and drew away from the field. It is a confident steer from Trevor Ritchie and Majestic Sun will take it home. Can he beat the Grand Circuit boys or what? He whooped them. Majestic Sun won by eight. There were plenty of you who were up to our viewer challenge last week. You knew that only Precious Bunny, seen here winning the 1991 jug, has won the North America Cup, Meadowlands Pace, and the jug. Our winner was Barry Babbage of Edmonton, Alberta, who will receive the 2009 Little Brown Jug Press Guide as his prize. It's time for a new challenge this week. Last year's Little Brown Jug, won by Shadow Play, was the fastest of all time, featuring a 149 and 3 mile, the first sub 150 mile in the pacing classic. However, it was not Shadow Play who turned in that fast mile. Who was it? If you know, we have this Brian Sears bobblehead that we'll send out to you. Send an email with your name, address, and of course your answer to i at ustrotting.com. We'll select the winner from among the correct answers we receive. And as always, if you have any comments or questions about Ion Harness Racing, we'd love to hear from you. Send email to i at ustrotting.com. That's it. We'll see you next Tuesday with another edition of Ion Harness Racing. But there's no need to wait that long to see coverage of the Little Brown Jug, which comes up on Thursday. We'll have exclusive video right here online from Delaware, Ohio. Coverage in our web newsroom and, of course, that Jug Mini website. Visit ustrotting.com and click on the mini site link to get a plenty of exclusive coverage from the USTA on the second leg of the pacing Triple Crown. Until next Tuesday, I'm John Pavlock. Thanks for watching.